Today we are here to discuss um, on a topic which is creating global advantages under the new normal. Uh, the new normal connotes a steady state now. This collective experience we are feeling perhaps hadn't felt in the history of mankind. Uh, with me today, the panelists are Poonam Jain. Uh, she is from uh, India. Tina Choi, she is uh, from China. And John Chen from Taiwan. Uh, more uh, of the topic will be shared soon. I'll just introduce the panelists. Poonam, she is um, she's from uh, India and she works uh, in the information technology. Primarily, she's working with banking uh, in, the, in the payments domain. She's also uh, uh, an alternative healer, a master practitioner in uh, NLP. She believes in a combination of technology with energy and the coaching skills in her role work closely with people. She, she believes in empowering them and to unleash their potentials uh, in order to achieve their goals and visions. Uh, that's about Poonam Jain. John Chen, he is a, uh, he's an MBA from the Hong Kong University. He's currently working as a financial planning and analysis manager in Sony Pictures Entertainment. Tina is, she's a professor and she's also a man, managing director of YC International Company Limited. Uh, she is, uh, she's a slasher and an entrepreneur who is actively involving in venture development and funding raising. So with this, over to you, uh, Tina, to start the discussion on today's topic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Smita. So, yeah. Let me share the screen to all of you. Okay. So uh, good afternoon from Hong Kong. So my honorable guest uh, panelist member, Ram, Poonam, and also John. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tina Choi, the chair panel in this section. Our agenda today is to have a brief introduction uh, by me first, and then follow with the sharing by each of our panelist member. So after that, I will have a short summary, share my own view, and also lead into the first question. So if you have any questions in between, you can uh, just uh, raise your hand uh, by clicking the raise hand button and then Swifter will help me to uh, uh, ask the questions. Or if you want, you can also leave your question in the message box. So finally, we will open uh, to the floor for Q and A's. So everyone is clear now? Okay. Okay. So, um, Let's begin. So once again, thanks for spending your time with us to discuss and explore the topics of creating global advantages under the new normal. So it is believed that all of us has experienced the social distancing and other hygienic uh, measures under this trying time. So when I have got the invitation to propose the topic for Awake, Aware and Arise events, this has popped up immediately in my mind. So first of all, uh, Awake. So deep in many people's hearts, there is still a dream. So many people nowadays are still dreaming of the good old days, which will be back after the COVID-19. They dream of everything will soon back to normal, maybe one year ago, or for the worse, maybe suffer for a period of recessions or economic downturns. And then in their mind, the world will be back to the protocols, which they are familiar with. Tina, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, like yeah. what Vinita has said, can you move the presentation more so that it's more uh, clear and expanded, please? Thank you. Yeah. Is it okay? Maybe my computer problem. Is it okay? Because I, I cannot see the view from your side. Uh, maybe I, I just try to push it smaller. I think when I when I see the presenter more, I, I cannot Vinita see. Vinita is saying it. yes, Tina. Yeah, is it okay now? Yeah, she says it's better, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So. When people dream about back to the good old days, so I'm really sorry, I have to ring the bell and then wake them up. 
because our new normal has established already and intuited quietly. For example, whether you like it or not, and then we are now expert in Zoom, especially for those who are parents who have to study with their kids to handle their learnings. And then last night when I have uh, dinner with my classmate and he has told me that he's now enjoying uh, doing exercise with the fitness equipment at home, and then which he had never thought of, and then he owned a premium gym membership before the pandemic. So previously, many, many managements did not trust the productivity and also efficiency from uh, working from home. And the pandemic has actually forced them to accelerate their co cooperations to change to digitalize, as well as the automation of robotic system, and then to replace the human work. Um, for instance, maybe working in the hospital to deliver the drugs to the patients and also um, the warehouse management for picking up stocks. You know, we have quite a lot of online shopping now. And then uh, maybe as well as speeding up the development of AIs. And this also risks our jobs as well. Okay. Uh, the economy has shed a record of 22.2 million job loss in March and April in U.S., in the aftermath of the spread of COVID-19, according to the US Labor Department survey of the business establishment. And then uh, recently we know that it is less than half has been recovered as of August. And the other survey from the World Economic Forum has also pointed out that uh, two out of every five jobs uh, will lost during the COVID-19 and it will never come back. So it is also believed that the future of the business travels and even the necessary of having a physical office, and then they are actually in doubts. So even for me, I am having some teaching jobs in the university. It is believed that the hybrid mode of teaching, a mix of physical contact, face-to-face -face, uh, traditional one, and then together with the online classes will replace the traditional chalk and talks, lectures. So definitely, COVID-19 virus will lead us to the new normal. And secondly, about the aware, although we have uh, locked in our home and then other than enjoying the Netflix or playing the TV games, I know PS5 has just launched and then this is a very crazy uh, purchase around the world. And then we should be aware of and also stay alert for what it is happening across the globe. And then other than the lateral catastrophe, and then with the disruptions in the global value chains, just now I have mentioned a bit, and as well as the new science and biological, uh, biomedical technology development, we should also be aware of the growing tensions in the trade wars and also the rise of protectionism between countries. So uh, yesterday you can see the courts in US, they are uh, arguing about whether we should ban WeCheck from using in US as well. So uh, this will be another wave of the uh, protectionism between countries. And then how can we create our global advantages in various industries under the new normal? What will be the future rising megatrend globally? One of the more frequently asked and discussed topics will be, will globalization be killed by COVID-19? And what will be it after the pandemic? We can also further discuss in the following sections after the sharing from Punam and also John. And uh, I do love our topics because after staying awake and be aware of the circumstances, most importantly is about arise. So in our panel discussion, uh, I expect we will discuss how we will reshape ourselves both physically and also psychologically because our panel will uh, talk about the ways to adjust ourselves to stay confident and also unleash our potentials uh, to create our own advantages across the globe. Uh, how should we position about ourselves uh, to convert the actual constraints in the environment into our advantages for our own self as well as our own businesses? Of course, uh, how can we seek help from the professionals like coaches or we may plan the further study like John to have his own MBA to equip ourselves as well. So, okay, um, I, this is my brief introduction. So I will pass the stage to Punam and then uh, she will share uh, her own view. And then next I will also summarize it. Uh, thank you, Punam. Great, thanks a lot, Tina, for introducing. I hope I'm audible, loud and clear to everybody. Okay, great. Yeah. 
So uh, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, good evening at places where people are logging in out of India. So one of the key things, as you rightly said, Tina, in the global advantage with this new normal way of working, a lot of things are changing and a lot of things are going ahead in not the way we used to usually work. So what I have noticed and I have observed in my own profile and in my work is that the things have changed because I, I come from a technological background. There were a lot of restrictions which we had earlier in terms of technological things not being connected from home and a lot of things had to be done from a constant place, be in the office, work around with there. And like almost my like 15, 16 years of my work, I have spent going to offices, being at places and doing all of uh, the work from the work environment itself. But with this new aspects of things which have started coming or happening around because of the COVID, uh, I think the perceptions have shifted from not being just at one place, but we are moving to working from more distributed places is what I say. So we were having connections earlier across the uh, globe, but now within the same state, within the same city, we are still sitting apart, but we are still connected with each other through this uh, technological advancements that we are having. So as you rightly said, Zoom and using new platforms of connecting online have really helped us to shift changes through the way we are working. So the key thing that has happened and what I think is that the globalization is not going to get killed, but it's gonna have a new way, a new transformation which is happening. And it's also called, uh, the more common terminology that we use uh, right now is globalization, which means you have a global and a local combination where it gets converted to called as a globalization, where you're focusing on the best of your local abilities and working towards the global aspects of things. So in the new way of working, it will be a mix of the best of the global things which is happening and the local things. And uh, as we all know, like the COVID, uh, 19 has spread globally. So I really tell you that the globalization is also like the same, uh, like a virus, it's always there, it's been there, it's been spread across uh, and it's within each one of us. It's very difficult to imagine that we're going uh, back to the localization aspect of things. So a combination of global plus local is going to bring the new uh, thing that I see after the pandemic where it will be like more of a globalization a combination of the best world and using the best of the technologies to stay connected with people and to get in more advantages and value add for people that we are bringing in. And value adds will happen at multiple levels because now we're talking about a fusion. So it's not only going to be at a technological advancement, but it is also going to be at a personal advancement where people will have to really start working out in things which will be way different than what they have been doing earlier. So learning is something which has to stay continuously to be upgraded to the newer things which is happening. Because with the current situation, I think each one of us has learned how to connect through the new technological platforms. And we are becoming so accustomed to it. Now it's becoming our new way or a new habit for doing things. And as you rightly mentioned, Tina, that earlier we used to think of going to the gyms and being uh, in the groups. Now we are doing a lot of online classes and we are still feeling physically happy, healthy and uh, joyous. So the globalization would talk about using the local aspects of things, being globally connected at your technological level and also at a personal level, uh, which I say that your own views of fitness, your own views of working towards the technological advancements in learning newer things, connecting to people. And with all of this, the data becomes a very crucial thing. And uh, the data that we are carrying and the information that we are having will be much more than what we had earlier. So staying connected, building that awareness and ensuring that we are able to connect these dots between the technological, the personal and the data aspects that we are having would be something where I see the new a uh, world coming in or new way of things happening globally across. So my view, Tina, globalization is not going to be killed. It's going to be transformed. And uh, the more frequent words that we hear now is referred to as globalization. And that's where we are heading towards bringing the best of both the worlds. So that's my view in terms of getting global advantages forward. Yeah. 
Thank you, Poonam. So uh, any special advice that you can share with our audiences and then see how we can arise after you know having the connections to stay connected globalization is still changing into other forms of new normal so any special uh, uh, advice or uh, ways of thinking that you can recommend to us as well uh, yes, Tina. So, so the uh, one key thing which uh, I have benefited and I hope others would also be able to benefit with this new aspect is uh, so one of the key things which I've always been talking about is the self-reflection uh, and focusing on the self as well because now are the times when we should also look at ourselves, understand what we are doing, how we are doing and how we can take that advantage to the larger audience to the people across, uh, because I'm a firm believer each one of us has something unique to give back to the world. So to stay uh, globally and still be uh, uh, having the local flavor, you need to pick out the best of you and start giving it to the world. So that's one of the key things which I would talk about because that's mm -hmm. helped me a lot during this time where I have been able to pick up one of my key things and start taking it forward. So that's one of the key advice I would really want people to take forward with. Okay, so Ram, do you have any add-on uh, before I pass the stage to John? Yeah, okay. Um, you know, uh, soon after the whole uh, uh, the COVID thing started, about uh, probably a month, month and a half, India was on a lockdown and I had occasion to talk to uh, a group of about 20 odd uh, CEOs and CXOs of companies across India uh, for about five or six sessions in terms of how they are going to respond. This was still early days and people believed at that point in time this is going to go away soon. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened even after about six months or so. So one of the things of course was that everybody was uh, like what Poonam is saying, um, moving on to the the only available option, if you want to conduct business, is the virtual option, the technological solutions in one way or another. And at that point in time, probably there was a bit of a novelty about it. Um, and many of the companies were coming up and saying, oh, you know, our productivity has increased by so much amount. And this is all some of the biggest companies out there, uh, which was true they did increase 33%, 40% or something of that sort. But the downside of it was that very soon they started realizing there is something called the Zoom fatigue or whatever that equivalent of the fatigue is. So, um, and that, that's become rather serious because people are not able to draw boundaries uh, between what's work time, what's uh, lifetime. Um, and it seems to be, everybody seems to be on call all the time. Uh, the other is, I think I also see that, especially women, especially those who have to manage households are in far greater stress than men to a large extent. Um, in a sense, I, I know a couple of very senior executives and uh, so these people were telling me that um, they were highly stressed. I said, uh, is it because you're not able to sort of set boundaries? I said, no, even if I set the boundaries, I have to manage the household. And unfortunately in countries like India, which is very traditional, probably a large part of Asia, uh, the women are still the one who are expected irrespective of whatever it is to manage the household as well. And they are in a much, much worse situation. The men of the house are pretty much happy, relaxing and, uh, or they think that they are doing work. They're the only people who are doing work. So uh, this is, a, I'm talking about a CEO uh, woman leader. And uh, I, I, I really felt terrible about it. So the new normal is not in one sense, just a technological shift, but like you said, a psychological shift for people to understand what the heck is going on. That is not quite there. The other huge shift that I have seen happen is in the beginning, there was a lot of statements about, you know, it's the rich who are getting affected, the wealthy, because they are the ones who are flitting around from place to place, traveling, and they are getting affected. 
Okay, fair enough. But as always, the wealthy have the wherewithal to take care of themselves. And uh, so now the real, uh, the truth of it is emerging in terms of the people who are really affected are as always, uh, the people who are not so wealthy, uh, the, the underprivileged and, and so on. And countries like India, huge number of migrant workers and like, for instance, US, maybe Trump wouldn't like to see the statistics or maybe he's happy to see the statistics that the blacks are the most affected. I mean, the percentages are huge. The difference between those whites affected and the non-whites affected, the differential is almost double. Uh, and these are actual facts and figures. So where are these going to lead us is, is a far more serious question in terms of the new normal uh, what is going to happen as and when everybody, of course, is waiting for the vaccine, probably by the time it's available to pretty much everybody, except especially those who really badly need it. Uh, it's going to take about a year or so. I, I don't think there is too much of that kind of thinking happening anyway, in terms of what's, what's in the long term things are going to do. Everybody is looking at, okay, uh, I know it's going to take... Uh, three months or six months before the vaccine happens. And we are all relatively in a more privileged position. We might be able to access it in one way or another. But what about those who are not able to? And how are they going to cope with it? And then the other side of the picture in terms of socioeconomic business-wise, there are, of course, industries that are going to be pretty badly hit, some perhaps wiped out. Uh, real estate related, hospitality related, travel related, and so on. They're going to be in deep, deep trouble. Everybody knows that. On the other hand, there are some which are doing amazingly well. Education, ed tech, fintech, and all these companies. Stock markets, pretty much in every country, for whatever reason, they are booming. So probably they know something more than what normal people do. Um, so bringing all this together, as uh, I, think, I think Poonam said that, in terms of self-awareness, in terms of what do we think as coaches, instead of just standing by the sidelines, if we would like to get involved, and this is what we started opening up in the opening conversation yesterday, what is it that we can be of help with in what we can be help prepare people to face the so-called new normal, which is not only I mean, the word new normal itself, I think, is totally wrong because we are going into a situation where the new normal is going to be always abnormal. It's going to be uncertain. It's, it's, it's a, I mean, people talked about VUCA glibly without even really realizing what it means. And today, for the first time, we are really in VUCA. Apart from the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, you have something which is uncontrollable. Uh, uh, microscopic uh, element is, is today taking over lives, controlling it, and we have we firstly, for, for the first time, we realize that we are not uh, so strong after all. So that's going to be the new normal. So uh, I don't have any answers. I have only questions. So one of the things I would also suggest is that amongst the uh, people here who are attendees, if there are any who are actually doing some work specifically, um, perhaps I would even say, say modeling work, for example, in terms of scenario planning and things like that. Um, so please raise your hands and Sweda can invite you into this platform. So at this point in time, I just would like to listen and understand more about what other people's views are, starting with uh, John here and perhaps, perhaps somebody else in the audience and also, we need to think completely differently from what we are used to thinking. I'll, I'll stop here for a moment. Yeah, so thank you, Ram. So I think it's really good sharing to uh, refine our topic. So there is a dispute disputes of whether there is a new normal or not, because some people say that the change is actually uh, happened just across to the flow. So this will be no new normal, but everything is just happen uh, with a karma, the cause and consequences. So this will be normal to be having new normal. 
Yeah, so thank you, Ram. So another questions that are before I pass to John, uh, maybe I can also share a bit on my thoughts on how can the technology advancement and also the data about, you know, especially for fintech or other new economic technology can help. Because uh, before that, I have met an entrepreneur. So he is doing the property tech. And then he's told me that Tina later in this, uh, earlier in this year, I plan to have the property tech across the Asia because they are the developer in Japan, Taiwan, and also quite a lot of emerging countries. And then they just told me that after the pandemic has come, they stopped recording all the data because uh, they thought that those data is not correct to reflect all the flow and also the tourists and as well as their future forecast. And then after uh, the CEO talked to me, I immediately asked them why, because you know, those set of data are actually very precious because it's record how people will react under the new flow of you know, pandemic situations or maybe touch wood, there will be another wave of unprecedented virus or any kinds of uh, catastrophic things. So I asked them to restart their recording of data in order to learn by their AI system at the back end, because this will be a very special period. All the data are very precious. You can also uh, track how the records of the people are reacting and also uh, changing over the difficult time. So this will be a small pieces of my sharing on how I see uh, under the new normal, we should react to the data and also technology advancement thing. So um, maybe I pass the stage to John, he can share a bit on his will, and then next we can open for the discussion as well. So John, please. Yeah, basically I'm in uh, one of the industry you guys might think it impact a lot. So now I work in movie industry. So basically I work for Spider-Man. So obviously mm -hmm. Spider-Man and Manon this year probably they are on vacation together. So <laughs> we don't have that much uh, new movie on the theater. However, uh, as a finance manager in a company, I can still see our movie actually sell quite well, especially to Netflix. So you can see the stock price of Netflix going up and up. And we sell, I can also see the data from like Google, iTunes, and which we can see a lot increase. So I would say it's very different from the previous year. And the way we see a business is very different. And also personally, I feel the data become more important than before as well. So that's why my company found me last year and asked me to do a lot of global project, try to help them to track the data. So especially during pandemic. So once uh, when I remember uh, there is a lockdown in India, like at March and after the lockdown, I see our movies on Google, Google play increase by more than three times one day in one day. So, so sometimes when I, re, when I see my financial report, I realize, okay, we lose something on the theater, but on the other way, people are changing their behavior. So they start to watch movie online. They start to buy all the movies on Google Play, iTunes as well. So I feel like we need to think about how to cooperate to adapt into the new normal. I wouldn't say it's, a, it's an abnormal. I would just say a new normal in my way. So on the other hand, for my personal view, I feel like because of this, a lot of transactions happen online nowadays. So you can see all the e-commerce company, all the digital business grow up really quickly. And all the business need to be, you know, there is a joke. So who pushed the digital transformation? COVID-19. So basically <laughs> it's better than any consulting firm in the world and also beat a lot of professional like worked really hard for the past 10 years. So COVID-19 really transferred the way we do the business, really push the digital transformation. Most, even small shop probably in China or in India, they start to sell their product online, not only the big giants, right? So you can see the Shopify and the other, this kind of like help the small shop to transfer themselves into an online shop. So for me, especially for, um, for me personally, I pick up the all this data analytics skill, like from like probably two years ago. And uh, at this stage, I really appreciate at that time I decide to do this and I really get benefit from this as well from my career. 
So I will say, just like, you know, it's a bad timing for all the human being, but it's also a good time for you, you know, to review yourself and to, you know, improve yourself and adapt into the new world. So, yeah, so that's pretty much I want to share. And of course, feel free to ask me questions. So, yeah, so let's probably, I can share something I can share for now. Yeah, thank you, John. So uh, when I was asked to chair this panel discussion, so John's name immediately also popped up in my mind because uh, he is one of the uh, specialists that I have met in my previous company. And then he was my ex-colleague as well. So by that moment, John has uh, proactively picked up all the data from uh, Actually, we, we were working in Dyson uh, in North Asia by that moment. And then uh, all the in-store data that are very precious, but no one aware, are aware of it. And then by that moment, it's as well before, you know, um, the social movement in Hong Kong and also well before uh, the pandemic. And then it's what, almost two to three years ago, I remember by that moment, John, right? So, um, and then we pick up the data together and then everything from scratch. And then previously before the big data terms has come up, uh, we have got a lot of raw data. And then when we are studying about statistics, statistics in the university, we are always looking for clean data, right? And then afterwards, and then we step back and then we think ourselves, so all the clean data are actually hiding the precious human movement in between. So that's why John uh, is really a uh, visionary. He has taken up the job to collect all those messy data from all the in-store retailers, online shoppers, as well as how long do they log in in the website. And then uh, finally, we find out some nice trend and also insights which deduce from those messy data. Yeah, so this is how the big data trend has come up and then John is the really uh, uh, young leader in his age. So uh, he's always excelled from the others because he didn't uh, stay just as it what he wants. So we all are bringing our company into the next stage by deducing all those insights and then we apply it. So this will not only be pushed by the COVID-19, it can also be speed up by ourselves. So it really depends on whether you are visionary enough to see through the trend other than you know you're just doing what the status quo as you are yeah so this is how and why i would like to invite john to join us to talk about his data and also visualization tools and then maybe john you can share more about why uh, you love data so much because i know you're a commercialization person instead of a you know really uh sci data scientist side so I would like to learn more why you would like to develop your another skills other than your financial knowledge. Yeah, so basically before I was um, purely finance person in my early stage of my career. So at that time, I worked for a lot of FNCG company, fast moving consumer goods. So as a finance manager, then you are always challenged by your sales head like Tina or <laughs> like someone else, like saying like, why we didn't meet the budget, right? So I was always the one, you know, uh, I don't want to be challenged. So I want to know the answer as well. So I always dig into data, even 10 years ago. So at that time, we don't have such tool. We only have Excel to analyze. But imagine that the size of the data, the size of digital uh, transactions grow up probably double every year. So for now, it's difficult for you to use traditional way to analyze the data, right? So imagine that when I was in Dyson with Tina, at that time together we work and the digital platform grow like 10% every year, our online shop. So the data size grow 10, uh, like 10 as well every year or even more. So it's difficult to use traditional way. So at that time I start to think we should have a better way to look at the business and also the digital data can help your uh, physical business as well, right? For example, the digital data may contain a lot of personal information, like, okay, who are the person buying you are the, buying your products, and what's their gender, what's their age group, 
and what's their behavior. So they probably buy on the weekend or buy on weekday and where they live because you have, your, you have their shipping address as well, right? So basically you can have a kind of like understanding of your customer from your online sales. That's why a lot of luxury brands, they try to push online sales for, uh, for the past few years as well. So through the data, you can know much better your customer than traditionally we, we talk to them on the, in the store, right? So that's also the way, if you want to understand the business in the whole picture, you need to start to look at the, something they cannot like, which is data. So you can get the age, you can get the gender, you can get whatever they like uh, from online playful. So that's the time I decide, yeah, I need to use this skill set to help the company and also to grow my career. So I think I'm lucky enough because I actually started this like three or five years ago. And now if you see the job market, a lot of job description, they will say, oh, I want someone with 10 years finance experience. And probably this guy need to know data as well. So on the market, a lot of people have 10 years finance experience, but they don't know data that much. So I think it's also a benefit for me at that time to pick out this skill set and which grow my career recently as well. So that's the reason I decide to pick up this for, for my career progression as a skill. So that's how John has created his own advantages uh, over the years. And then he is now the, you know, I, I'm not sure whether I, I quote your title correctly. You are now the Sony Picture um, APEC Finance Manager, right? Yeah, so now I cover APEC. So including, including Japan, Greater China, Southeast Asia, India, and Australia, New Zealand as a finance manager. Yeah. yeah. So I see one common point among all of the speakers today, including uh, Ram, Gunam, and also John. Uh, we are actually not only doing our own job, but we have quite a lot of different skills and then we create our own ecosystem. So I have to disclose one of the secrets from John. So he's also one of the KOL who are teaching, you know, all those data analytics as well as, you know, quite a lot of sharings online. So he's a KOL in Taiwan and also in Hong Kong as well. Yeah, so there's a story about this. So because I'm Taiwanese, but I work at Hong Kong. So for the past few years, I always go back, uh, go back and forth to Taiwan to teach in like, like good school in Taiwan. So I always just go to the, teach the undergrad student for them to, to use uh, data analytic tools. But this year during the pandemic, I realized it's difficult for me to travel. So I decided to, you know, to open my YouTube channel and I record several sections. I teach Tableau, uh, however, in Mandarin. So <laughs> I really want to share, but in Mandarin. So it might be challenging for you guys to understand. But I started this just because of pandemic. And I can see the benefit from the channel as well. So it actually brings some cash flow for me now. So it's not a lot, but you know, I diversify my cash flow and I can get some money from the ch channel as well. So it's very interesting. So now I have around 30,000 followers after six months. So, and the number is still going and going up recently. So I am happy to see my second career online. <laughs> Yeah, so I think this is a very good sharing and takeaway. So uh, may I also ask uh, the tips from Hunam and also Ram, how you can manage so much, you know, different arms of your working. So you are coaches as well as you are NLP practitioners, Hunam. So maybe you can share some tips to us as well. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tina. So as I uh, was talking about, the key thing for each one of us is going to be uh, making sure that we are passionate about the things that we do because uh, the key thing which I always look out for is uh, the passion uh, because when you're passionate about the things that you're doing you're able to manage your time and uh, as you said multiple different things so I don't consider these to be multiple different things but I see all of them connected with one common uh, thread of the learning that we are going to do and the value that we can bring back to our clients and to our customers. Because when you start connecting yourself with this common thread of bringing value, 
then you don't look at these things to be multiple uh, variety of things that you're doing, but you see a one common goal that you need to achieve, bringing value to your clients, bringing value to yourself, uh, bringing value to the society. So that's one of the things which I would really want uh, for the participants and everybody that the mindset shift of making sure that you're providing value to yourself and to the people around, to the society, would help you to work at the things which you like and which will help you to get to the end goal of providing uh, the benefits. So that's how your journey would start happening of doing what you call as multiple things, but connected with one common thread. I always refer to this as an example of uh, if we have seen a beautiful pearl set or a diamond set, it's connected with a very, uh, it's connected with a very thin thread, but all the different unique pieces of the pearls and diamonds are connected together. So it's the same thing where we're connected to one value of providing benefits to ourselves and to the customer and uh, to the society and then bringing all these unique pieces of the pearls and diamonds within ourselves. So that's one of the key mindset shift, which I would really encourage everyone to look at because once you have that in place you will be able to really take things forward for yourselves even in this current situation where we talk about uh, being in a pandemic state uh, but yeah looking for opportunities looking for things beyond is something which this current situation has pushed every one of us to look beyond what we really have with us. Because if this would not have been, I think we all would have been working in our traditional ways of doing things and in the traditional style. But there is something which has come in, which is, I would say it's a good uh, disruption because we all have started thinking beyond and looking for things which will start adding values. Uh, of course, uh, it's not that easy for everybody, but not everybody, uh, not everyone has been able to cope up with this, but uh, in my experience, maximum of them have been able to take these things forward to their own advantage and to the advantage of the society. So that's a key mindset shift, which has helped me to work on multiple things at the same time, giving, doing something beyond what is there. So Ram, anything that you would want to add on? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm seeing something and I, I would really like uh, everyone from the participants audience to add something about at least one new thing, like what John was mentioning and what you're saying, in some way that they have started doing since the pandemic. And if it's just a hobby, um, like I know that many people today have uh, started putting out blogs and various other kinds of things, and but some of them have actually st started monetizing it. And to go back to the point that John made, um, that uh, he has started on a parallel career, as it were, an AMCO career, um, doing something which is certainly benefiting him. It would be very interesting to see what is it that other people are doing. Uh, like Poonam, you said, many people that you meet are doing it. That's wonderful, truly wonderful. Um, uh, but in my uh, association with many people, people are still struggling. Uh, those who are well off don't really think that they need to do anything about it. Okay, I'll sit it out. Um, but there are others who seriously are looking at this as an opportunity to express themselves in many ways, whether it makes money or not make money. So given the background picture, you are sitting in front of the meditation and the halo around your head as a healer kind of stuff. Yeah, what you said is very right. If we are able to go within ourselves and figure out what that's really important. So one thing that it teaches us whether I said abnormal, John felt it's, it's not so abnormal, uh, maybe it's a different normal, perhaps. But um, we all come from philosophies of either Buddhist or Hin uh, the Hindu Vedic philosophy, where uh, life is transient. Everything that happens in life is transient. So more than anything else today, that's proving to everybody um, how relative things are and how things can change so rapidly, including our own 
lifespans. Um, so within that, what is that we are really here for? And what is it that uh, we can achieve, not just for ourselves, for other people as well? Um, speaking for myself, in many ways, uh, at my age and the kind of work that I do, I don't think much has changed for me, um, truly, because uh, at, at one time when we started working in coaching, um, all coach training and coaching was supposed to be face to face. And uh, I felt very differently. So almost about six, seven years ago, when we set up Coach Aria about close to eight, nine years ago, started this virtual was always uh, the go-to space for, for us. And there were many uh, who started off as trainers with us who felt very uncomfortable. And basically I had to at some point in time tell them, okay, if you don't like it, that's okay, you can leave. Um, and, and, and today, as it so happened, not that we intended it to do, so this is the only way that you can do it. And those people who felt that there is no way that you can interact with another person without that person being in front of you, uh, whatever distance it is, and you're able to look at that person and perhaps even touch that person and so on and so forth. Today, uh, in these kind of environments, they are in deep trouble. They, they really have to adjust to completely different psychological um, uh, interventions. So. For, for us, as, uh, I mean, talking about Kocharya itself, uh, it, it's, it's not really a new normal in that sense. Uh, there, I would agree with John. Um, it's certainly not abnormal. It's not even a new normal. It's just capitalizing an opportunity that has been presented to us where we could explore ways that we can expand uh, using the virtual platform uh, and, and the way it is structured, not as limitations, but as advantages uh, in the particular environment that we are, out, we are in. Um, you use money by not traveling, you save money by not using uh, hotels and stuff like this as venues and so on. And so this is going to be pretty much the standard in future. In many areas where we work today, that's what is going to happen. Most corporates are realizing that work can be done without necessarily having to travel, without necessarily having to take flights and stay in hotels and all that, which were enjoyable perks for many people. Not that it was necessary for work. It was made to be felt as necessary because they derived personal advantage out of that. And pretty much every hotel and the travel industry, if you go through the figures, 70 plus percent of its revenues and profits came from business travelers, uh, whether it is in hotels or uh, airlines and such other related things. And they, they are wiped out today. And I don't think that's going to ever come back because uh, people who are sensible, especially uh, you guys, uh, like John said, he's a finance guy. The CFOs of companies are going to make sure that that old normal doesn't come back because uh, otherwise you're not going to make profits. Um, but within that space, what else uh, can you do? Um, th th those are the kind of things like that. I don't know if some of you remember, maybe some of you are too young for it, but uh, maybe not that long ago. Before Amazon and stuff, there was something called eBay where anybody could put in their wares. And that, I, I, I remember there were old ladies who were doing some handicraft work uh, at home, um, sitting somewhere probably uh, in the boondocks of China somewhere, and they were able to sell that stuff into the US and Europe and so on and so forth. And they, they really became popular and made money. So maybe there are multiple things that we can do. Uh, so probably we'll have to tailor our expectations. We need to uh, look at more a need-based kind of attitude in terms of what we want to do rather than a want-based that I'm going to be better than the next guy, I'm going to be richer and so on and so forth. Uh, those are probably some of the things that uh, I would certainly, if I'm to coach somebody at this time and age, that are, those are the kind of things that I would like them to look at and explore. Thanks.
Yeah, thank you, Sram. So I think uh, I will also share my personal experience. So just now I quickly draw a slide from what I have shared previously and I can show to you how I can synergize myself. So uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, not a new slide, but my old slide from my previous sharing. So I think uh, one of the common points that all of us now is a slasher. So actually in my core, uh, I build my own ecosystem to leverage everything all together, just like what Poonam has shared. So when I have uh, done all the things all together and then they can synergize one another, that will be, you know, you are not doing many things, but you are doing one thing all together at a time. So actually I'm a, a, a assistant professor in uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong who are teaching the communications and also uh, one of the top this uh, research in how to create global advantages. So coaching and also teaching is actually my core. And then uh, I also teach entrepreneurship. So I will practice what I have preached and then in the venture development side, as, as I also uh, use a TV program in the internet so that the media side is actually helping my students or the new ventures to advertise themselves. So I'm the host and then analyzing the ventures and then sharing with the audiences. So that's why you see the pink uh, bubbles in the middle. So I also practice my media just like John, but don't have so much followers like John. <laughs> so, but it's still okay because I have uh, uh, a group of fans now. And then I also commercialize and also having the fundraising part because I have to help the ventures to develop. So I will uh, use all of my previous corporate learnings from what I have in Johnson & Johnson, P&G, Dyson, and then I help the new ventures to grow. So I assist them to commercialize and also do the fundraising. And for the teaching part, uh, the four small bubbles is actually the branches of my teaching. So I remember why I start my Enneagram coaching and also interview consulting quite a lot of things in that moment because I would like to determine to be a different teacher or professor in the university because the traditional way is talk and talk. So I just teach and then you guys listen. And then we never have the you know, personal contact, especially for the postgraduate teaching. So I start my coaching, I would like to, you know, really touch the hearts of every single student, understand what they would like to learn, because I believe that my teaching belief is that everyone needs is different. When they come to study MBA, when they come to study master degree, some of them may want to have career advancement, some of them may have uh, pure academic curiosity, and some of them they would like to, you know, just don't know what they would like to do, so they come to study and then find their new way. So that's why I start my journey of coaching and then give them advices as well. And then uh, I, I'm also a quite a strange person because I practice my tarot tasks and also flower remedies and also some occultism sharing. So for these small little bubbles, it's actually echo what I'm teaching now. So I would like to have my personal case sharing and then uh, to summarize all those speakers why we are building up our own ecosystem. And then I just typed this slide after listening to uh, Bunam Ram and also John. One common point to all of the panel members today is that we are all slashers. We have our own ecosystem. We just have to make the synergy across what we have now, think beyond, and then life is transient. And then in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and also uh, South Korea, we have a saying called YOLO, you only live once. So you have to really keep creating. If I have to summarize today, I, I think how can we be aware and be arise if we have to keep creating? So this is what I want to share with all of you as well, uh, because the globalization is that we should have the new thoughts of the positioning. So globalization is a really generic word. So if I have to put it in a very academic way, it should be G-I-L-T. What is it? So this is the globalization, internationalization, localization, and also translation. Of course, translation is not mean, doesn't mean the language translation is how you can translate your global thinking, your company or your own self into different cultures. So for example, if I am a Hong Kong person, if I have to go to Taiwan, I have to respect the culture as well. So we have to agile enough to react to the new government's policy quickly. One of the uh, entrepreneurs that I have met uh, in the past few weeks, he react quickly to the Hong Kong uh, government uh, policy measures. It's, we have a new decent business funding support. 
So he has helped over 200 of his own clients to apply for it. And then he quickly sell all his products to those 200 uh, uh, clients because of the support of the government funding. So he just agile enough to react quickly and he earned over 2 million Hong Kong dollar within three months. Yeah, so it's all support by the government. So one of the globalization advantages that I would like to share with all of you is we should act agile enough to, you know, capture all those government new policy because after the post and pandemic era, all the governments, they would like to inject the new funding to support the new economy. So in terms of the directions, we have to identify clearly whether the job availability is related to the industry. So in the beginning of my sharing, I have just mentioned about the warehousing is actually very flourishing now because a lot of online shopping, John has said that uh, COVID-19 has pushed the digitalization. So a lot of people, they are now shopping online. But how about the warehousing? Uh, we are now having more robots to, you know, do the work instead of the human work. So the industry is flourishing. Doesn't mean there's job availability here. So I have a, a, a website which is quite good. It's uh, actually save uh, all the jobs for tomorrow for 2020. And I don't have sufficient time to share slide by slide today. So you may go to that website and see what will the new directions and then match your own strengths and build your own ecosystem. In terms of the innovations, I think uh, just now all of us has mentioned about the technological disruption. So people nowadays, they love authentic things. So creativity always wins. And then we have to think about how the digital and human can combine together. And then we have to have the cross-functional skills. Just like what John has mentioned, he has the data analytics skill as well as he has the finance skills. So combine all together, he is a very good a helper to all of the financial and also commercialization teams. And in terms of the communications, there's a new terms called, previously we only have B2B or B2C, but now we have a new terms called B2R2C, business to robots to customer, to consumer. So this will change the marketplace for how we reach the consumer. So before uh, the session today, I have just uh, receive a very strange message. This is a very traditional SMS. It's from a headhunter agency. It's actually a bot instead of a human being. The bot sent me a message asking whether I'm actively uh, looking for jobs and then I just answer yes or no and then next he will, uh, the bot, I mean the, the AI can talk to me directly and he can accurately locate all my profiles in the LinkedIn and previously what I have done. So B to R to C is a new trend. So artificial intelligence uh, data is the king in the future. It will become the gatekeeper between brands and also customers. And finally, the customization point is really important. Just like why I start coaching in the middle of my career, because everyone is expecting something different and tailor-made for themselves. So if you are going to develop your own career in terms of coaching or in the corporate world, or you start your own business, so remember there's something very important that should be tailor-made. So this is the summary of what I would like to share today. And then next, I would like to play a small game with all of you. This is what I have prepared. So this is what I have seen in the news. So how you will remodel a circus? Because previously, before the pandemic, a lot of people, they will visit the circuit and then now we have the social distancing, we cannot visit the circuit altogether. So if you, you, you know, uh, if you have to feed a lion, it's, it's very expensive. So how can you remodel the business of a circuit? So anyone from the from the floor or from the panel, <laughs> have a try. I can't, I can see because I'm sharing the screen. So Smifta, any, anybody is answering. Vinita has put online game of training. Ah, that's a, this is very creative. So any more? Okay, so let me review the answer. So uh, I know this is in Chinese, but I will translate it. So actually they are uh, selling the tongue of the lions. The tongue of the lions. This is actually the rubbish previously. 
So why? Because, uh, for example, in the countries like Australia, the dung of the lions can actually help to repair all the insects or the animals. You know, we are now having the social distancing and all the wildlife, they are very happy in the, in the nature. So they are coming in and then they would like to, you know, entrain in our house. So they are now selling the dung of the lion and then they can uh, just spread over the gardens and then finally they can help to repel those uh, wild animals naturally. So this is uh, selling at five euro per dung, per bottle of dung, and then they are overselling 2,000 dung already. Yeah, this is an extraordinary good income. So if you are creative enough, you can help to remodel the circus. And then next, they will have some more ideas. They ask the tiger or the lion to scratch on the jeans, and then they, they have the uh, new brand called Animal Damage. So this will be an interesting ideas, as well as the uh, penguin, they can have the footprint and then with the color paint on the shirts, as well as they will ask the ghost to paint the picture. And then all these are creative selling. So even though under the pandemic area, the pandemic era, they can help to sustain the circus uh, operation as well. Yeah, so another funny things. How will you remodel bodyguard? No one is actually on the street now. So this is a quite traditional industry. So anyone? Yeah, very smart, very smart. Winifer, you are really smart. So they are, this is the news that I have seen today. So they are the Chinese bodyguard. So they add the digital defense in a training. They thought that the cyber security should be the key of the training now, because right now, not only, you know, the physical guard they need, but there is something they will uh, having the eavesdropping and as well as you know the digital intrinsic, so they will having the new network security skills. Yeah, so this is quite special, right? Hopefully, they will only think about the physical training, and right now, learning the new. So this is how the uh, bodyguard is rewarming themselves. And then one more sharing is that uh, there is a quite funny uh, sales in Hong Kong. So this uh, cooking pots is actually from Japan. And then they are developed under the pandemic from two store to six store in Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is really small. So if you have been home, you will know from two store to six store, especially under the pandemic retail area, time is really difficult. So this man is sensitive enough. So under the pandemic situation, everyone want to cook at home. He actually starts two years ago, well before the pandemic. So if you are sensitive enough to get in touch with the trend, the customer in uh, your own countries or your own area, you will definitely get the global distributions and also global sourcing. So in response to our talk, globalization won't die, but it depends on how you can get the insight from the customer that you are targeting in. Okay, so uh, this is more or less, I just typed uh, just, now, just now after all the sharing from the panel. So maybe there are some uh, typos from my, from my slide, but I think it's a good sharing as well. Uh, just now we have all mentioned about the technology advancement. We have to connect to people, have stay connected, and then there will be a vaccine development under the biotechnology development. Data is the king. So we have the new set of data, new information flow, new economy like fintech. As well as you have to boost up your confidence, we have to pick up the strength, and then there's a psychological shift. Ram, I'm sure you are a good husband because you notice all those hard work from the women and female as well. And then we should have a good sense of awareness. While for social economical, we should focus on the new trend, uh, play at, always pay attention to the worker, and then we use data to forecast the future as well. While for the digitalization, we have to go online and then uh, we have to think about our second career as well as we have to be innovative in personal level, product level and service level. We should be unrest about the status quo. Yeah, so yeah. Finally, I would like to share my
a piece of photo board before I open it. And this will be about uh, the Darwinian theory. So we have never had of the strongest and smartest in the, in the world, but the best fits the fittest of the survival. So those who have been most adapted to change, you will win in this game. So this is how I would like to share in my uh, panel sharing today. So maybe we can open to the floor for the further discussion if there is any things that you would like to ask all the panelists member here today. So Smita, any? Yeah. Tina, there's the a question from Vinita. She asks, what is flower remedies and occultism in sh uh, occultism sharing? Ah, flower remedies actually um, from Bach, B-A-C-H, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, there are some natural flowers and herbs, and then the extracts from them actually can mix all together for different usage. For example, in Hong Kong, we have a commercialized product already, which is available in Guardians or Mannings yeah, in the region, and then they can help for ease your sleeping issues. And while actually they have quite a lot of different flowers and herbs, and if you mix together, for example, after every single coaching session, uh, my coach will ask me about how can I boost up my confidence or how can I you know, uh, concentrate in my studying. So I have to understand the root cause of why bring them having the sleeping problem or concentration problem, and then I will pick the right uh, flowers or the extracts of herbs and then mix to them. And then you can use it as a spray or some people, if they are brave or dare enough, they will just mix it with brandy or cognac and then they will drink it. Yeah, so somehow it is uh, natural remedies for flower remedies. For occultism, there is something uh, just like, I love uh, you know all those knowledge from, uh, for example, tarot readings or philosophical uh, thinking. So all those things, they are not the mainstream uh, study. We summarize it into occultism. Yeah, I hope I can answer her question. Yeah, maybe this, there is uh, quite a lot of different things in that area. For example, the astrology, yeah, the feng shui in, in Chinese culture. So all those things, they, are, they can be grouped in the occultism. Yeah, I, I'm really happy that you picked that up. <laughs> So any other questions or any, uh, any things that add on from John or Smifta? Nothing from me, but I'm happy to take any question. <laughs> Okay, so Answer I think- any question, uh, Tina? Yeah. Okay, that's great. So um, maybe we can conclude our panel discussion today. So for the summary and also uh, all the sharing, I think uh, Kosharia will upload to the website. So if you have any uh, friends or families that happen cannot join in this session today, you can always refer to our website and then we, you can have the recording and just uh, uh, thank you, Smifta. And then if you have any further questions, you can always email me. Yeah. So let's conclude our session today. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we have two more sessions for today. One is starting at 7.30 p.m. IST and the other one, 10.30 p.m. IST. Uh, do join in or if you miss, uh, do watch the recordings. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, John. Thank Unum you. have to leave early. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Bye, all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.